Reading what David was saying in the newspapers today, I think the important thing is that we don't give up on this, that we don't pursue a policy of public spending cuts, that we continue the £5 billion investment that we've put, it, we've put in. The actions of government have prevented unemployment increasing by another half a million, which we would have done but if we hadn't Sean Bailey uh, is suggesting, you know, it's fine to spend the money, but you're not spending it the right way. There's not enough joined up thinking. It might be better encouraging small businesses providing the jobs rather than some of the training. Well, we've given some good su support to small businesses um, as well during this recession, and the Department for Business, Innovations and Skills are bringing together, uh, that's precisely the reason for forming that department, is to bring together both business and support for employers um, and skills training, and then working with me um, on the employment side and, and trying to get the labour market to the position. bottom line. The bottom line is this, there's businesses in this country who would take on young people if they could get access to this big money. You make all these announcements, they sit in their living rooms thinking, well, where is this money going? It's going to the training provider. And what's happened there, you must understand, if you provide businesses with staff who they can afford, they generate money in our economy, which generates more business, which generates more jobs. Mm. What this is doing is making a big bill for the government to continue paying. It's not sustainable. And this £5 billion, where is it going to go? It sounds good on the news, but it needs to go to well, businesses. Uh, That's who well, insures well, let, let, let me bring in Professor Blanchflower on that point, because you, you want the government to continue a public spending programme. And you, I mean, you should... you. From what I've read you saying, you think they're doing broadly the right things, though, don't you? I think they're doing broadly the right things, absolutely. But they're being swamped by the numbers. Uh, what we've kind not of seen, are you doing? We've not seen numbers of this kind before. So I think the problem for all that we've he heard today is the difficulty is the system was designed where there were jobs available. And the problem now is there just simply are not jobs available. And the system's but, not quite but adapted then, then, to that. Then are you, are you just saying it's world economic factors? So we've all got to, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Lisa and Chris are just going to have to tough it out until the jobs are available. Well, no, the, um, it is world economic factors. It is a big cohort. But my argument is um, the government's putting things towards this problem, but I just don't think it's enough. We have to throw everything we can at it. I've called it a national but, crisis. But what else should they be doing? I mean, yeah, what, what type of things are you doing? With yeah, I mean, Lisa's pounds? asking that, that question now. What, 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 what type of things would work, do you think? Well, first of all, subsidising jobs for the young, cutting national insurance contributions, um, particularly trying to encourage uh, pe people to stay in school, uh, stay in college, do all sorts of things to encourage so them. So that's why we have a uh, September guarantee for everyone aged 16 and 17 to uh, go to school and college this September if they want it, uh, not matched by Sean's party. Um, that's why we are spending £1 billion pounds of that £5 billion pounds on creating 150,000 uh, new jobs, 100,000 of which are ring-fenced for young people. The other 50,000 are there for hotspot areas. That's why we are in the process of developing 35,000 extra apprenticeships. And I know Sean may have had difficulty with uh, his uh, organisation in accessing those apprenticeships, but we're in the process uh, of building those. Uh, and, you know, well, clearly yeah, people can say we should be doing offer. more. The apprenticeships they offer are like IT, um, plumbing, construction and cooking. Not everybody wants to do that. Yeah. We so, need to make a there, wide yeah, range well, of different Lisa, things. there are new apprenticeships that are, are coming through beyond the traditional ones of hairdressing and construction and so on that, that you've been talking about. Uh, in my last job as schools minister, I was encouraging the development of the teaching assistant apprenticeship. So someone like yourself who uh, might have uh, started doing some training that, working that, with that, children that, might be that, interested that's in going fair into enough, schools. But the, the centre that I, was, I spent two days in and then decided job seekers allowance no more, not worth it, I'm in finance. I did not see one booklet with finance recruiters in. I saw hospitality, I saw catering, I saw construction. It's nothing to do thing. with finance. And the people that I was working with at that centre turned around and said to me, there is little to no help available for highly skilled workers under the government schemes. And the biggest thing as well, all these measures you're talking about that have not been matched by the Conservatives, what part of them is sustainable? You must understand, if you're going to offer us employment into the future, you cannot keep paying for it out of our collective coffers. Mm. You've got to boost the private sector to take these people in. Jim Knight. As I say, there's a lot of support that's going in to the private sector, but it is sustainable. What's unsustainable is allowing generations of young people to...